Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how to set up the a7 IV for filmmaking. First of all, make sure that you're in video mode. And then set the camera to manual mode. Let's talk about the image quality. The best quality would be XAVCS All Intra, but for that we would need faster SD cards. XAVCS is actually good enough and you can use V30 cards. Let's get to the frame rate. Most films are shot at 24 FPS, but there are also exceptions. For the record setting, we want 100 megabits a second, and 10 bits are important if we want to do a lot of color grading. If you have a slow PC, you can use internal proxy recording, which can help your workflow. If you have a G Master lens, you can turn on briefing compensation. This will make the focus pulse look more natural. If you put your hand in front of the viewfinder or your gimbal is too close, the camera will automatically switch to the viewfinder. This can be very annoying while making a movie, so we're gonna turn it off. On the last page in Submenu 6, we can change this setting from automatic to manual monitor. If you're filming on a sunny day and you can't see anything on your screen, you can change the monitor brightness to sunny weather. If you now raise your hand in front of the viewfinder, the monitor stays on. When making a film, it's also important that the white balance is set manually. Otherwise, we could see some color changes, which would make our shots look unprofessional. Go to the third page and select white balance. Here you can scroll between the presets. If you're filming on a cloudy day, for example, you could set the white balance to cloudy. If you scroll down even further, you can enter your own value. And if you hit the OK button again, you can select the color value even more precisely. To go back, you have to press the menu button. If you select custom one, you can also white balance with a white balance card or other white object. Just press the middle button of the wheel, hold something white in front of the camera and press the button again. If you press OK, it will be saved as a preset. The ISO should also be set manually. Go back to page 3 and select ISO. Set the ISO to your desired value. The value is also dependent on the picture profile you use, because each picture profile has its own base ISO. If you still want to work with auto ISO, I can recommend you setting a limit. Go into ISO range limit and here you can set a minimum and maximum. I wouldn't go over 12800. The marker display can be very helpful for composition and framing. First we set the marker display to on. Here we can activate the center marker, which can be very helpful if you want your subject to be exactly in the middle of the frame. Now you can see a crosshair right in the middle. Another tool that I use a lot is the aspect marker. Here you can select the aspect ratio you want. Unfortunately, you can't fill in the gaps with black. I hope Sony updates that. These markers don't actually crop the image, they just show us how the crop might look in post-production. You can activate safety zone, but I don't use it at all. The guide frame can also be very helpful for composition. If you want to select a picture profile, you have to go on page 3, select color tone and scroll down to picture profile. Here you can select whatever picture profile you want. 
I already made a video about my favorite picture profile S-Log3. If you're filming in a flat picture profile, you can activate the Gamma Display Assist. You can find it on the last page. Scroll down to Display option and activate the Gamma Display Assist. You can also choose the type of assist, but I usually let it on order. So now you have like a Rec 7 or 9 preview. So the focus assist tools can be very helpful if you're shooting with manual focus. Go on page 4, select peaking display and turn it on. I usually set the peaking level to mid. And here you can choose whatever color you want. And now if you pull focus on your manual lens, you can see that the little red dots appear. That means that you are in focus. And there is an even better tool called focus map. We can turn it on by going into the focus assist settings. Set focus map to on. So if you pull focus now, everything without a color is in focus. Another great tool is the focus magnifier. So it basically zooms in the image so you can view the subject you are trying to focus more easily. You can also increase the zoom four times. Go to number 9 on the first page. Here you can turn on or off steady shot. If you're shooting on a tripod, I would recommend you to turn it off. If you're shooting handheld, you can use active stabilization, but it crops in a bit. You could also dial in your own focal length, but usually auto works great. On the third page at number 3 you can select the metering mode. I usually use multimetering and spot metering. You can even change the size of the spot. If we go back into the settings and change the spot metering point from center to focus point link, we can combine the flexible spot with our light meter. Now we have to go into the focus settings. Change the focus area to spot. If we move the focus point now with the joystick, we can see which exposure is on the focus point. If I put something darker in the picture, you can see how the light meter shows a different value now. This can be very helpful if you want to measure a specific spot. If your camera overheats, you could try these things. Set your camera to airplane mode. What works the best is setting the auto power off temperature to high. And what also could help you is flipping out the screen while recording. If you're filming at 24 fps, you should double the shutter speed, because that gives you the most natural motion blur. The aperture completely depends on the scene you're filming. And make sure to stay as low as possible with the ISO. If you want to go higher with the ISO, I would recommend you to go to 3200, because that is the second native ISO. First of all, we're gonna change the focus area from spot to zone. 
Now you can pull the focus by using the joystick. You can also pull the focus by tapping on the screen, but you have to activate it first by pressing this little box right here. If you press this box again, you can activate the tracking mode. So if you would move the camera now, the subject would stay in focus. You can cancel the tracking by hitting the middle button of the wheel. If we go in the focus settings now, we can change the speed of the focus pull. If you set the AF transition speed to 1, the focus pull will be much slower. That's so amazing, it's like having a focus puller inside your camera. We can also change the sensitivity of the focus pull. So if you set the sensitivity to 1 and you put something in front of your subject, the focus won't move, it will stay on the subject. And if we set the sensitivity high to like 5, you can see how fast the focus changes as soon as something comes in the frame. If you want to customize your buttons, you can go to the last page. Select number 4 and select custom key. Now you can customize each button. For example, I put crop modes on my second button. It is under movie settings, image quality, APS-C. So now if you hit the button, you crop in with one click. The function menu can be very helpful if you want to change your settings fast. Go to the last page, select Operation Customize and then select Function Menu Settings. Let's say you want your picture profiles at 1. You can find it on the second page at number 5 and then select Picture Profile. If you hit the Function button on your camera now, you can simply scroll through the picture profiles. Thanks so much for the support guys. I appreciate every single one of you. I made a little gift for you. I created a LUT called Alligator. It works great with wildlife footage and moody shots. I've also added a few templates that can be used to create a 8mm camera look. You can find the tutorial in the folder. The link for the package can be found in the description. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.